Okay. Comic book close-ups number three. Star Wars. Epic collection. The Empire. So this is a trade paperback that collects about 20 different Star Wars books. Um, I just want to feature one of them. Okay. Uh, Alright, so the gloss has given me a little, a little strife, but... Entitled Prey. We start off with a huge kind of half-page splash of Slave One rocketing into orbit. Very cool. The drama begins with Darth Vader staring out of the window of a Star Destroyer. You disagree with my actions? Grand Moff Tarkin. Okay, so pre-Star Wars era. Star Wars A New Hope, I mean. There is no need to hire bounty hunters to solve an Imperial problem. This matter should be handed internally. Oh, so Vader was staring at Slave One. Okay. I thought they were two separate panels, but it turns out that this flows pretty well. Slave One to Vader staring at Slave One from the window and then referencing it. This is good. Lord Vader, we have tried to handle this matter in internally as you suggest. All of our efforts have been for naught. It is a critical time for the Empire, and bringing in outside help is nothing but a, w a sign of weakness. So, they have a large uh, argument, large argument, an ongoing argument about whether or not the Empire should use bounty hunters to enforce um, what is implied and not really um, said specifically is that um, they're looking for Han Solo. Fett comes highly recommended. They say he is the best there is. I have no doubt he will find Solo. So they eventually get to him uh, talking about Solo. He's nothing but an overpriced mercenary. Remember that line, because I want to come back to that later. He's nothing but an overpriced mercenary. So at the end of this little discussion, they end up deciding that, um, you know, Vader demands that uh, they don't use the bounty hunters. And Tarkin's like, fine, but I'm not calling Boba Fett back, so he's the only one. But it, why not go after Solo yourself, Tarkin says. If the Emperor will allow it, I will become involved. I think he should have said, the, Empire, the Emperor will resolve this matter for us. I thought that would have been cool. Because back in these days, Tarkin was actually a superior to Darth Vader. You'll notice in New Hope that like Tarkin shuts down Vader a couple times. He's like, enough of this! Remember when he's choking out that other other Imperial Moff uh, in the Death Star meeting room when the Rebel plans have been stolen? Um, Tarkin is like, enough of this! And Vader stops. Like, he literally kind of has to answer to Tarkin. Um, so that would have been cool. Rather than him saying, I'll go ask the Emperor and maybe he'll let me. That doesn't sound like Vader. Uh, what would be better is if he just said, the Emperor shall resolve things. So either way, I like the conflict between Vader and Tarkin. And then Shuttle Tidarian blasts off, and uh, the story begins. We quickly hop to a mining colony in the Hoth system, where we see the man, Boba Fett. Boba is in this kind of a pit stop in a backworlds kind of area, and um, he's asking this question to this gentleman right here. I don't know that race. Does anybody know that alien race name? Are they to Togru or something like that? Um... He's on the hunt, and he quickly finds out from asking questions. Uh, about a month back, the fighter crash landed here. The pilot survived, but in bad shape. He managed to walk to a nearby settlement. How much in the way of modern medicine out here, but a local nurse healed him back to health. Solo. So, okay, I didn't know Han Solo crash landed on Hoth. Uh, or a, a colony in the Hoth system. Uh, maybe it's not the same planet that uh, they were in in Empire Strikes Back. Maybe it is. But I didn't know he landed here. Alien guy tells Boba Fett, Last I heard, he boarded a transport shuttle. Headed for warmer parts. About a week back. I think he was headed for Tatooine. Boba Fett pays off the guy. It's kind of cool seeing the money on the table there. It kind of reminds me of The Mandalorian. It's kind of why I decided to do this uh, 
comic book close-ups because there's so much Boba Fett action and Mandalorian action happening these days. There's this quick four-panel kind of uh, rapid-fire, and it's Vader finding that guy, holding him up, right? Hoisting him up, blade in hand, taking him out, and then saying, Captain, I'm returning to the shuttle, plot a course for Tatooine. So it's implied that he questioned that guy and found out that Fett was going to Tatooine. Boom. What looks like it could be no other than, most precisely, the wretched hive of scum and villainy. We see Boba Fett with a cool little holocron, or <laughs> not a holocron. We see Fett with a little hollow vid chip or projector, and uh, he's hot on the trail, goes into this little pub. I wonder if it's the same pub from the beginning. Once again, paying people off left and right. Fett is a man who knows how to get things done. Cash. Cold, hard cash. Uh, follows the lead, and uh, before he goes into the place, drops these little weird devices outside over the sand, and then goes in. It's so cool, man, like, not to keep referencing Mandalorian, but just seeing all this architecture again and how well they got that on uh, many of the planets, that kind of, like, colonies, the settlements. They just look so cool, man. It's all old world, but it, it looks Star Wars, right? Even though it's, like, stucco and stone buildings, it just looks like Star Wars. It's cool. It's really its own place, man. It's a unique galaxy. Fett comes in. It's a great shot of him, half in shadow. Goes into the bar. No sooner do we find Han Solo chatting up the babes. The space babes. Comes in, sits down. I don't know if Solo recognizes him or not. Maybe they don't know each other yet. Probably not. He's eyeing him up from the distance. What's in store for Han Solo is he's chatting up the babes. Fett's ready to bring him in for a galactic bounty. And no sooner does that happen, boom, Vader arrives. Boba Fett and Han Solo are kind of caught off guard. I like the, like, double panel uh, on that row with no dialogue and just, like, the little action lines. They're standing up out of their seats. Vader arrives. Fett doesn't hesitate and just starts firing. Vader pulls out the saber and just starts blocking bolts. So Boba Fett and Vader are just, you know, fighting away. And Han Solo's kind of like, uh, maybe I should just get the heck out of here. This is a great page I'm going to pull out. Kind of open this up a little bit. My glare. These are really glossy pages because it's a trade paperback. It's not the original print paper. So this stuff is really, really glossy. I'm trying to do my best to to break away from the uh, ultra-reflective. That's not too bad. Fett. Vader. Vader. Fett. Your hunt is over. I am here for Solo. The bounty on Solo is mine. You have no part in this. Hansel is just kind of watching this whole thing, and he decides to bounce. Good move. A couple shots fire at Hansel as he's running. Fett realizes he's in deep trouble because he's got Flight Vader alone. Um, Hansel goes outside and steps on those little devices that Boba Fett left. Bow! It erects what? A stasis field? Meanwhile, inside, Vader is handing Boba his behind. Uh, this is kind of a little little jarbled, but it looks like uh, he's kind of gut-punching and then lifting up Boba Fett. Swap! Boba goes up into the air. I expected more from a bounty hunter like you, and he's about to take him down with a lightsaber shot. So remember when I said, remember that line? The line was, uh, you know, we don't need the help of a, of a, a lowly bounty hunter type. Vader says it a couple chapters, a couple... A couple pages back when he's talking to Tarkin, and, uh, you know, we don't need bounty hunters. Uh, they're nothing but high-paid mercenaries. That was the line. Well, then you have Vader saying, I expected more from you, uh, I expected more from you, bounty hunter. Well, which one is it, Vader? Is it, you know, he's nothing but a high-paid mercenary, or I expected more from you? I don't know. So, little things like that. I could be being nitpicky, but little things like that are, uh, you know... If you only have a little bit of dialogue with a the character, then you, you should keep it kind of consistent. Anyway, turns out, turns out, boom, that Boba Fett pulls out a lightsaber of his own. What a great splash page or a reveal. 
can you guys make that out? I uh, apologize, it's a little dark. So it's a cool shot, man. The lightsabers clashing are dividing it in half, but then the second half of it is the next panel. So you would think that it would be Vader on one side and, and maybe like Boba Fett down here, uh, but all actually supposed to be one scene, but this is actually two separate little cuts. So that's kind of cool the way they make the use of the spacer there. And they're fighting, and... Uh... So the fight continues, and, you know, it's it's interesting because Vader, I would think Vader would be able to finish him quickly, but I guess Boba Fett's got some speed. He runs outside, uh, or the fight gets taken outside, where then we see Han Solo still in his little stasis field paralysis. Lightsaber blades clashing, clashing. Boba Fett's kind of trying to figure out what he's going to do. This shot is a little bit confusing to me. So Vader's rushing Boba Fett. He's up against the wall. Fett doesn't block it um, exactly. I mean, he holds the blade up, but then they just show this strike, which I would presume sort of means like either action moving forward, uh, energy blast. I thought it would be the, the collision of the two blades, but it turns out the blade hits the wall. But then this is where it kind of gets confusing is that, you guys can maybe help me out with this, then it's Vader kind of like towering over Fett, and you know he's not even there, so I guess it's just it's supposed to really just highlight this lightsaber and, and a little flip sound. So I don't know if Vader used his own lightsaber to flick away that lightsaber, or if Boba Fett threw it. But either way, it resolves with Boba Fett's lightsaber landing and hitting that little device, the stasis field, and freeing Han Solo. I don't know about that. That's a little convenient. Vader uses the Force to push Boba Fett away. So it's kind of interesting. Vader doesn't even really care about Boba Fett. He's just like, okay, enough of you. I know what I'm really here after. Run, Solo. You may not escape the Empire, but wherever you go, I'll find you. And Boba Fett's holding this little device. So I don't know if he put a tracker on him or not. Later. All right. Nice Star Destroyer shot. Vader looking out the window like he always is, surveying his galaxy. Captain, I want a full report on Solo's escape. Ships don't simply disappear into nothing. And then get ready for hyperspeed. So this is another part that I sort of have a problem with. I'm just going to do the panel by panel here. Course plotted. Awaiting your order, sir. Excellent. Prepare to jump to light speed. Be sure to dump our refuse first. Yes, sir. So here we got it, a direct throwback. If you look in really closely there, you could see a little ship parked on the back of that command center of the Star Destroyer. And we got another one of these little old-fashioned rebel ships. I believe that's the A-Wing. And Han Solo's in there. There goes the garbage. Time to detach. I really hope I never have to do this again. Garbage detaches and Han Solo floats away. Just like he did in the Millennium Falcon in Empire Strikes Back. Um... That's a little bit too much on the nose. Like, I get it. It's a little bit of nostalgia, but, um, like, it's almost like, can you balance out fan service with original stories? I guess there's no degree to which you can, you can ask, like, what is going to be fulfilling for a reader? Like, do they really want to see that Star Wars nostalgia directly to that? To that degree where they show you something happen again it's like oh i get it that's where han solo got the idea that's where he learned it some people dig that you know um i like a little bit more like show me something new show me something that han solo never did although i do like finding the origins of you know where people got their weaponry or you know that scar or where did they get that injury so like i'm half and half but um anyway it's a cool story this is the star wars empire trade paperback it's about 20 stories in there, and they're all awesome. It, it's really good stuff. Uh, it's a great find. I definitely recommend picking it up um, if you're a Star Wars fan, especially now because there's so much good Star Wars stuff coming out. There's a bunch of Boba Fett stories in here, too, so if you're a Boba Fett fan, go for it. Check out Jabba in the back. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching Comic Book Close-Ups number three, Star Wars The Empire Trade Paperback. Have a great day.